Hi everyone, and welcome back to episode two of this uh, kind of special series on the biomolecules of the coronavirus. Uh, and so in this episode, we're going to be looking at lipids. Um, so these are long nonpolar hydrocarbons, so fats, okay? So fats and oils. Um, normally when we're looking at um, fats, we're thinking about animals generally, uh, and fats from plants are generally uh, oils. Okay, so um, why is it that animal fats are generally solid? So something like lard or bacon fat, uh, or that thin piece of uh, fat that you see around a steak or even the marbling in the middle of it. Uh, why is that a solid, but the vegetable oil, olive oil, uh, these are all liquids. Uh, it has to do with the saturation. So uh, you'll remember from other parts of the class when we saw, talked about a saturated hydrocarbon, we said that every bond, every carbon was singly bonded to another carbon or to a hydrogen. So when we get something like that, we have these uh, chains that zigzag back and forth, um, but they don't bend anywhere. Not really. Like, okay, so they zigzag back and forth, but they generally make this straight line. And if we were going to start stacking these on top of each other, they could form something that is almost crystalline in their behavior. Uh, they're going to stack together extremely well anyways. Uh, if we start taking away some of those single bonds or some of the hydrogens and we end up with double bonds in the, the molecule, whether it's monounsaturated or polyunsaturated oil, um, we start out with a nice chain that we might be able to form in the same way, but then we get it going on the same side uh, and it has a real kink in it. So when we try to stack these together, um, we're not quite as successful because the kinks don't necessarily need to line up with each other. And so because they don't align very well at room temperature, it ends up being a liquid at room temperature. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So you'll notice I drew all of these and it shows it up on the, the slide there um, or on the screen as a cis double bond. So these are ones that are going to be bent and carrying on on the same side as it came in from. We don't see any trans ones there. Well, what happens um, when we take a, say a polyunsaturated oil from a plant and hydrogenate it so that we're adding in hydrogen and turning some of those double bonds back into single bonds um, is that we end up with uh, trans fats or trans uh, uh, double bonds. And these ones now can lay straight, so we have something that is an unsaturated uh, oil, but it can lay more or less like the um, fats could, and it can again be a solid at room temperature, so something like margarine, um, which has, has nice properties when we think about, okay, we want something that's going to spread or we want to store it nicely. Um, of course, in the past oh, 20 years or so, we've found out that these trans fats are, are not healthy for people. Uh, and so we've taken them out of the products that we're going to sell as food. Uh, I'm sure they're still quite useful for things like um, lubricants and non-food applications. Um, but this, again, is the difference between, say, uh, vegetable oil and uh, like a solid vegetable fat. Um, it can still be done, just, uh, just a point of fact, like you still can hydrogenate oils. Uh, as long as it doesn't end up with any trans fats, then it's still good to go uh, for human consumption. Uh, what other kind of fats do we talk about when we're looking at biological things? So you might have also heard of, uh, say, omega-3s or omega-6 fatty acids. So this looks a lot like what we've already talked about in terms of soaps. Because they're behaving the same way. What you're doing is taking a fat so a long uh, non-polar hydrocarbon chain and adding on uh, a carboxylic acid head group onto it. So these are both, um, you'll see they're unsaturated, polyunsaturated fats. Uh, these are naturally occurring and, and relatively good for us. Um, 
So eating a polyunsaturated fatty acid is not the same thing as eating a detergent. This is absolutely not telling you to go out and, you know, maybe the Tide Pods weren't a good idea, but there's some other soaps you should eat. Uh, that is not the case, even though these molecules are relatively similar to soaps in some respects. Um, there's a big difference between a naturally occurring fatty acid uh, and a detergent that's meant to wash your, your jeans, okay? Um, but that's essentially what we're looking at when it comes to fatty acids, uh, another type of lipid. So we've already seen them. Um, we have the nonpolar section that's going to act more like a fat or an oil and have a stronger affinity for those types of molecules, as well as the, the polar head, which is water soluble. Or that same group can interact or to react with uh, an alcohol to form an ester bond. Again, something that we've already seen in our classes. So if you take something like a glycerol, so this would be uh, three carbons with three alcohol groups hanging off of it, and a fatty acid that would have the uh, carbo carboxylic acid group, uh, we've seen that we can form a bond between these and also form water uh, in a condensation reaction. And what we end up with are... Uh, glycerides. So these are monoglyceride, diglyceride, or triglyceride, depending on how many of these fatty acids we bond to the glycerol. Um, so that's what it looks like. Uh, again, something that's found in nature, and we need it inside of ourselves as well. Um, a variation on a theme here, and one that we're, we're kind of driving towards and being more interested in, uh, are phospholipids. So these are very similar to the glycerides, um, but one of the positions on the glycerol is instead of uh, another fatty acid, it's connected to a phosphate group. So uh, this is a phosphorus with, uh, that's with four oxygens attached, um, bonded through one of those uh, oxygens as an, uh, well, as a phosphate bond, in this case, onto the glycerol uh, backbone, and then two fatty acids as legs coming off of it. So you'll often see this thing um, drawn out. Let's see if we can just do it in different colors, uh, where you'll have the polar head group, uh, the phosphate group, and then the nonpolar hydrophobic uh, kind of legs hanging off of these things. And it's shown with a uh, an unsaturated, just carbon double bond there. Uh, again, quite common. That's going to depend on how fluid you want these structures to be, whether you want it to be a little bit more solid or a little bit more liquid. Um, and why would we, why would it matter if it's more solid or liquid? Because these are the lipids that are uh, involved in forming the lipid bilayer that makes up our cellular membranes. So this is going to be the surface of all of our, our animal cells uh, and also the surface of the virus cell. So we see our phospholipid molecule here uh, with the uh, phosphate head group uh, and the two hydrophobic tails. And these are all going to stand together so that the um, part that will interact with the water uh, are all together. And the parts that don't want to interact with water will also stick all together. So these things are self-assembling and self-repairing. Uh, which are both quite nice qualities when we're thinking about um, how we want our cell membrane to behave. Um, what else can we say about that? Uh, so why would we want, again, some flexibility when it comes to whether it's going to be more solid or more fluid? Um, because we're not necessarily, so humans are relatively good at, at uh, controlling our own temperature and environment, but not all animals are. So if you have a method to inject some more fluidity if it gets cold or some more rigidity if it gets too hot, now you can maintain the correct uh, flexibility in your cell wall without having to uh, come up with a whole bunch of different molecules to be able to do that. Um, you can also uh, use this um, nonpolar section to embed some other types of molecules. So we'll look at that when it comes to proteins, uh, because we're going to want some, say, way uh, of transporting different molecules through this barrier. 
um, because anything that's water soluble, so whether it's say chlorine ion, um, calcium, um, potassium uh, ions, these aren't going to be able to travel through this barrier uh, without something that's going to uh, provide a portal for it, uh, which is really the function of these membranes is you know that, uh, that we are mostly water, but you also know that we're not just a big bag of water. Uh, all of that water is very carefully compartmentalized so that there's not too much or too little uh, of water or any other molecule in any segment so that the whole cell can work. Um, so this is the, uh, the molecules that are responsible for dividing that up. Um, they're also the molecule that the virus is going to steal from us in order to produce its own uh, envelope, its own membrane. So we're going to look at this process uh, going from the RNA through the proteins uh, and packaging up a new virus. But as it's doing it, all of these proteins that it's making for itself, that it's hijacking our cellular structures to produce, uh, get embedded in a membrane of our own making. So when it's packaged up and released from the cell to go infect other cells or to go infect other people, uh, the envelope that it's used to produce its own uh, structure, that's, that's us, that's our cellular membranes. So, um, so that's how the, uh, the virus is going to use our phospholipid membranes uh, in exactly the same way that we do uh, and for the same purpose. So, so that's it for lipids. Uh, and next time we're going to move on to our next macromolecule, uh, proteins. So uh, I hope to see you then.